15 books that will blow your mind. We put together a list of 15 such books, taking inspiration from Amazon's list of 100 books to read in your lifetime, recommendations from Goodreads users, as well as some of our own personal favorites. These books exploration of politics, history, and the human condition are so insightful, they've withstood the test of time. The next time you're looking for a riveting read, consider picking up one of these 15 mind-blowing books. Number 1. 1984 by George Orwell. The year 1984 has come and gone, but George Orwell's prophetic, nightmarish vision in 1949 of the world we were becoming is to Melire than ever. 1984 is still the great modern classic of negative utopia a startlingly original and haunting novel that creates an imaginary world that is completely convincing, from the first sentence to the last four words. No one can deny the novel's hold on the imaginations of whole generations, or the power of its admonitions a power that seems to grow, not lessen, with the passage of time. Number 2. Brave New World by Aldous Huxley Brave New World is a novel written in 1931 by Aldous Huxley and published in 1932. Set in London of AD 254632 AF after Ford in the book, the novel anticipates developments in reproductive technology, sleep learning, psychological manipulation, and classical conditioning that combine profoundly to change society. Huxley answered this book with a reassessment in an essay, Brave New World Revisited 1958, and with Island 1962, his final novel. In 1999, the Modern Library ranked Brave New World fifth on its list of the 100 best English language novels of the 20th century. In 2003, Robert M. C. Crumb writing for The Observer included Brave New World chronologically at number 53 inches the top 100 greatest novels of all time, and the novel was listed at number 87 on the BBC's survey The Big Read. Number 3. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Frankenstein. Or, The Modern Prometheus is a novel written by the English author Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley about the young science student Victor Frankenstein, who creates a grotesque but sentient creature in an unorthodox scientific experiment. Shelley started writing the story when she was 18, and the novel was published when she was 20. The first edition was published anonymously in London in 1818. Shelley's name appears on the second edition, published in France in 1823. Shelley had traveled through Europe in 1814, journeying along the River Rhine in Germany with a stop in Gernsheim which is just 17 kilometers 10 miles away from Frankenstein's castle, where, two centuries before, an alchemist was engaged in experiments. Later, she traveled in the region of Geneva, Switzerland, where much of the story takes place, and the topic of galvanism and other similar occult ideas were themes of conversation among her companions, particularly her lover and future husband, Percy Shelley. Mary, Percy, Lord Byron, and John Polidori decided to have a competition to see who could write the best horror story. After thinking for days, Shelley dreamt about a scientist who created life and was horrified by what he had made. Her dream later evolved into the novel's story. Frankenstein is infused with elements of the Gothic novel and the Romantic movement, and is also considered to be one of the earliest examples of science fiction. Brian Aldiss has argued that it should be considered the first true science fiction story because, in contrast to previous stories with fantastical elements resembling those of later science fiction, the central character makes a deliberate decision and turns to modern experiments in the laboratory to achieve fantastic results. It has had a considerable influence in literature and popular culture and spawned a complete genre of horror stories, films, and plays. Since the novel's publication, the name Frankenstein has often been used to refer to the monster itself, as it is in the stage adaptation by Peggy Webling. This usage is sometimes considered erroneous but usage commentators regard it as well established and acceptable. In the novel, the monster is identified by words such as creature, monster, demon, and it. Speaking to Victor Frankenstein, the monster refers to himself as the atom of your labors, and elsewhere as someone who would have been your atom, but is instead your fallen angel. Number 4. 
The Trial by Franz Kafka. The trial original German title Der Prozess, later Der Prozess, Der Prozess and Der Prozess is a novel written by Franz Kafka from 1914 to 1915 and published in 1925. One of his best known works, it tells the story of a man arrested and prosecuted by a remote, inaccessible authority, with the nature of his crime revealed neither to him nor to the reader. Heavily influenced by Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment and the Brothers Karamazov, Kafka even went so far as to call Dostoevsky a blood relative. Like Kafka's other novels, the trial was never completed, although it does include a chapter which brings the story to an end. After Kafka's death in 1924 his friend and literary executor Max Brod edited the text for publication by Verlag Deichmann. The original manuscript is held at the Museum of Modern Literature, Marbach am Neckar, Germany. The first English-language translation, by Wilhelm Edmund Muir, was published in 1937. In 1999, the book was listed in Le Mans 100 Books of the Century and as number two of the best German novels of the 20th century. Number 5. Neuromancer. By William Gibson. Neuromancer is a 1984 novel by William Gibson, a seminal work in the cyberpunk genre and the first winner of the science fiction Triple Crown, the Nebula Award, the Philip K. Dick Award, and the Hugo Award. It was Gibson's debut novel and the beginning of the Sprawl trilogy. The novel tells the story of a washed-up computer hacker hired by a mysterious employer to pull off the ultimate hack. Number 6. The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. The Things They Carried is a collection of short stories by Tim O'Brien, about a platoon of American soldiers in the Vietnam War. His third book about the war, it is based upon his experiences as a soldier in the 23rd Infantry Division, 3rd Platoon O'Brien prefers to refrain from political debate and discourse regarding the Vietnam War, but has become jaded regarding the ignorance he perceives from the denizens of his hometown tour the world. It is in part this ignorance that drove O'Brien to author the things they carried. It was initially published by Houghton Mifflin in 1990. Many of the characters are semi-autobiographical, sharing similarities with characters from his memoir If I Die in a Combat Zone, Box Me Up and Ship Me Home. The book works heavily with metafiction, employing a writing tactic called verisimilitude. The use of real names and inclusion of himself as the protagonist within the book creates a style that meshes and blurs the fiction and non-fiction. The book's style helps distinguish O'Brien's literary approach from other authors. The Things They Carried is dedicated to the men of the Alpha Company with whom he fought during the war. Number 7. Slaughterhouse 5 by Kurt Vonnegut. Slaughterhouse 5 or The Children's Crusade A Duty Dance with Death 1969 is a satirical novel by Kurt Vonnegut about World War II experiences and journeys through time of a chaplain's assistant named Billy Pilgrim. It is generally recognized as Vonnegut's most influential and popular work. Vonnegut's use of the firebombing of Dresden as a central event makes the novel semi-autobiographical, because he was present then. Number 8. Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Fahrenheit 451 is a dystopian novel by Ray Bradbury published in 1953. It is regarded as one of his best works. The novel presents a future American society where books are outlawed and firemen burn any that are found. The title refers to the temperature that Bradbury asserted to be the auto-ignition temperature of paper, in reality. Scientists place the auto-ignition temperature of paper anywhere from high 440 degrees Fahrenheit to some 30 degrees hotter, depending on the study and type of paper. The novel has been the subject of interpretations focusing on the historical role of book burning in suppressing dissenting ideas. In a 1956 radio interview, Bradbury stated that he wrote Fahrenheit 451 because of his concerns at the time during the M.C. Carthy era about the threat of book burning in the United States. In later years, he stated his motivation for writing the book in more general terms. In 1954, Fahrenheit 451 won the American Academy of Arts and Letters Award in Literature and the Commonwealth Club of California Gold Medal. It has since won the Prometheus Hall of Fame Award in 1984.
and a 1954 Retro Hugo Award, one of only four Best Novel Retro Hugos ever given, in 2004. Bradbury was honored with a Spoken Word Grammy nomination for his 1976 audiobook version. Adaptations include Fran is Truthfaux's film adaptation of the novel in 1966, and a BBC radio dramatization was produced in 1982. Bradbury published a stage play version in 1979, and helped develop a 1984 interactive fiction computer game titled Fahrenheit 451, released in 2010 with a collection of his short stories, A Pleasure to Burn. Number 9. A Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole. A Confederacy of Dunces is a picaresque novel by American novelist John Kennedy Toole which appeared in 1980. 11 years after Toole's suicide. Published through the efforts of writer Walker Percy who also contributed a foreword and Toole's mother, the book became first a cult classic, then a mainstream success. It earned Toole a posthumous Pulitzer Prize for fiction in 1981, and is now considered a canonical work of modern literature of the southern United States. The book's title refers to an epigraph from Jonathan Swift's essay, Thoughts on Various Subjects, Moral and Diverting, when a true genius appears in the world, you may know him by the sign that the dunces are all in confederacy against him. Its central character, Ignatius J. Riley, is an educated but slothful 30-year-old man living with his mother in the uptown neighborhood of early 1960s New Orleans who, in his quest for employment, has various adventures with colorful French Quarter characters. Toole wrote the novel in 1963 during his last few months in Puerto Rico. Number 10. In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. In Cold Blood is a non-fiction book by American author Truman Capote, first published in 1966. It details the 1959 murders of four members of the Herbert Clutter family in the small farming community of Holcomb, Kansas. When Capote learned of the quadruple murder, before the killers were captured, he decided to travel to Kansas and write about the crime. He was accompanied by his childhood friend and fellow author Harper Lee, and together they interviewed local residents and investigators assigned to the case and took thousands of pages of notes. The killers, Richard Dickick and Perry Smith, were arrested six weeks after the murders and later executed by the state of Kansas, and Capote ultimately spent six years working on the book. When finally published, In Cold Blood was an instant success, and today is the second biggest selling true crime book in publishing history, behind Vincent Bugliosi's 1974 book Helter Skelter about the Manson murders. Some critics consider Capote's work the original non-fiction novel, though other writers had already explored the genre, such as Rodolfo Walsh in Operacci Massacre 1957. It has been especially lauded for its eloquent prose, extensive detail, and simultaneous triple narrative which describes the lies of the murderers, the victims, and other members of the rural community in alternating sequences. The psychologies and backgrounds of Ickick and Smith are given special attention, as well as the complex relationship that existed between them during and after the murders. In Cold Blood is regarded by critics as a pioneering work in the true crime genre, though Capote was disappointed that the book failed to win the Pulitzer Prize. Critics have also noted that parts of the book, including important details, differed from the real events. Number 11. Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Lord of the Flies is a 1954 novel by Nobel Prize winning English author William Golding about a group of British boys stuck on an uninhabited island who try to govern themselves with disastrous results. Its stances on the already controversial subjects of human nature and individual welfare versus the common good earned it position 68 on the American Library Association's list of the 100 most frequently challenged books of 1999-1999. The novel is a reaction to the youth novel The Coral Island by R. M. Blantyne. Published in 1954, Lord of the Flies was Golding's first novel. Although it was not a great success at the time selling fewer than 3,000 copies in the United States during 1955, before going out of print it soon went on to become a bestseller. It has been adapted to film twice in English, in 1963 by Peter Brook and 1990 by Harry Hook, and once in Filipino 1976. 
In 2005 the novel was chosen by Time magazine as one of the 100 best English language novels from 1923 to 2005. It was awarded a place on both lists of Modern Library 100 Best Novels, reaching number 41 on the editor's list, and 25 on the reader's list. In 2003, the novel was listed at number 70 on the BBC's Survey the Big Read. Number 12. The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. The Alchemist Portuguese O Alquimista is a novel by Paulo Coelho first published in the year 1988. Originally written in Portuguese by its Brazilian-born author, it has been translated into at least 67 languages as of October 2009. An allegorical novel, The Alchemist follows a young Andalusian shepherd named Santiago in his journey to Egypt, after having a recurring dream of finding treasure there. The book is an international bestseller. According to AFP, it has sold more than 65 million copies in 56 different languages, becoming one of the best-selling books in history and setting the Guinness World Record for most translated book by a living author. Number 13. Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Albom. Tuesdays with Maury is a memoir by American writer Mitch Albom. The story was later recreated by Thomas Rickman into a TV movie of the same name directed by Mick Jackson which aired on December 5, 1999 and starred Jack Lemmon and Hank Azaria. The book topped the New York Times non-fiction bestsellers of 2000. An unabridged audiobook was also published, narrated by Album himself. The appendix of the audiobook contains several minutes of excerpts from the audio recordings Album made in his conversations with Maury Schwartz in preparation for writing the book. In 2007, the 10th anniversary of the book's publishing, a new edition with an afterword by Mitch Album was released. Number 14. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. The Picture of Dorian Gray is a philosophical novel by the writer Oscar Wilde, first published complete in the July 1890 issue of Lippincott's monthly magazine. The magazine's editor feared the story was indecent, and without Wilde's knowledge, deleted roughly 500 words before publication. Despite the censorship, the picture of Dorian Gray offended the moral sensibilities of British book reviewers, some of whom said that Oscar Wilde merited prosecution for violating the laws guarding the public morality. In response, Wilde aggressively defended his novel and art in correspondence with the British press, although he personally made excisions of some of the most controversial material when revising and lengthening the story for book publication the following year. The longer and revised version of the picture of Dorian Gray published in book form in 1891, featured an aphoristic preface a defense of the artist's rights and of art for art's sake based in part on his press defenses of the novel the previous year. The content, style, and presentation of the preface made it famous in its own right, as a literary and artistic manifesto. In April 1891, the publishing firm of Ward, Locke & Company, who had distributed the shorter, more inflammatory, magazine version in England the previous year, published the revised version of The Picture of Dorian Gray. The only novel written by Wilde, The Picture of Dorian Gray exists in several versions the 1890 magazine edition in 13 chapters with important material deleted before publication by the magazine's editor, J.M. Stoddart. The uncensored version submitted to Lippincott's monthly magazine for publication also in 13 chapters, with all of Wilde's original material intact, first published in 2011 by Harvard University Press, and the 1891 book edition in 20 chapters. As literature of the 19th century, the picture of Dorian Gray is an example of Gothic fiction with strong themes interpreted from the legendary Faust. Number 15. A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. A Clockwork Orange is a dystopian novel by Anthony Burgess published in 1962. Set in a near-future English society that has a subculture of extreme youth violence, the novella has a teenage protagonist, Alex who narrates his violent exploits and his experiences with state authorities intent on reforming him. When the state undertakes to reform Alex to redeem him the novella asks, at what cost? The book is partially written in a Russian-influenced argot called Nadsat. 
According to Burgess it was a Judas Priest written in just three weeks. In 2005, A Clockwork Orange was included on Time magazine's list of the 100 best English language novels written since 1923, and it was named by Modern Library and its readers as one of the 100 best English language novels of the 20th century. The original manuscript of the book has been located at MC Master University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada since the institution purchased the documents in 1971. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and tell me what you think in the comments. Click subscribe channel. Because I post new videos every days. Usually. Thanks.